Good morning and welcome to Church Beyond Walls. Thank you for joining us this morning as we celebrate the name of Jesus, as we lift the Lord on high and as his train fills this temple. Go with us as we uh, read our scripture on this morning. We will be coming from Psalm 24. It says, the earth is the Lord's and everything in it. The world and all its people belong to him. For he laid the earth's foundation on the seas and built it on the ocean depths. Who may climb the mountain of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? Only those whose hands and hearts are pure, who do not worship idols and never tell lies. They will receive the Lord's blessing and have a right relationship with God their Savior. Such people may seek you and worship you in your presence, O God of Jacob. Father, we glorify and honor your name on this morning. We bless you for waking us up, for starting us on our own way. We ask that you would come into this place and open our hearts, open our minds, Lord God. Make us receptive and responsive to your word, O God. Give us a word that will change our lives both now and forever. Make us brand new, a new heart, a new mind, a new spirit, a new attitude, a new purpose, a new reason, oh God. Heal relationships, Lord God. Fix our lives, Lord God. We welcome you in this place. We glorify you in this place, oh God. We want you here, Lord. You're welcome and you're wanted and you're needed, oh God. Without you, life is worthless. Without you, God, we are hopeless, Lord, but you are the hope that anchors our soul. We magnify, we glorify, we exalt you, O oh Lord. You're worthy to be lifted. The Bible says, now unto him that is able to do it exceedingly abundantly above.
So we are grateful for your presence. We are going to go into the word of the Lord on today. But right before we get into God's word, we're going to pray and ask the Lord to open our hearts and our minds to his word. Father, we love you. We glorify your name. We magnify your name. If it had not been for you, we would not be here, God. We ask that you would open up our hearts uh, so that we may receive your living word and cause your word to become alive in our lives, Lord God. We don't want to just read your word, but we want to be a living, live example to the world of what your word can do. And in your word is you. In your word is salvation. In your word is deliverance. Your word is a living, breathing document. And so cause your word to become alive in us. As the songwriter says, faith come alive in me. Open our hearts, God. Make us sensitive and receptive to your truth. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Amen. I want to go to Acts, the second chapter. And we want to uh, just start with verse 21. And then we're going to just do some reading, and then we're going to drop down, um, and we're going to...
going to look at a few latter parts of this uh, chapter. Amen. I'm going to go down to verses 36 through 41. So we will read Acts. Uh, the second chapter will read from verses 21 on down to, uh, it's a, uh, we'll read down to verse 24. So Acts 2, 21 through 24. And then we'll look at verse 36 through 41. Amen. All right. Amen. The Bible says this, but everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Everybody. That's black, white, Spanish, Asian. Doesn't matter where you are from. If you call on the name of the Lord, you will be saved. It doesn't matter how difficult your situation is. It doesn't matter how dire. It doesn't matter what you've done. I don't care who, what you've done and who you've done it with. The word says, whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's the drug dealer. That's the murderer. That's the adulterer. I don't care. that. Listen, even the molester, uh, the homosexual, I, the lesbian, whoever calls on Jesus shall be saved. Let me just say this. When you run into Jesus, you run in one way and you leave a different person. Amen. Just like that. You can change overnight. Uh, listen, but these changes take a lifetime to unfold themselves. I was going in one direction, but when I ran or when Jesus confronted me, it is the beginning of the end of sorrows of the old life for me. If any man or any woman, boy or girl, be in Christ, he is a brand new project. Brand new assignment. You can come into Jesus as a drug addict and leave a free man. Leave a free woman. I'm reminded of John 4. Jesus met this woman who had a problem with men. She had a man problem. She liked men. And, and she was seeking satisfaction in men that only one man could satisfy her. And, and so she had several men. And the one she was with wasn't her husband. But I heard of a preacher that said, but when she ran into the seventh man, and the seventh man is Jesus, and he, he, he quenched her, her, her longing, and she left that day. She was seeking natural fulfillment. This water can't satisfy. Drugs don't satisfy. Alcoholic beverages, Bevmo can't satisfy. I know, I know y'all like Bevmo, but it won't satisfy what God does. But when this woman that sought temporary satisfaction for something that would last throughout eternity, listen, the hole is deeper and deeper. So when she ran to Jesus, she never filled her water pot, but she left her water pot and went to her hometown, became a mega evangelist overnight and says, come see a man. Listen, she had a problem with men, but she ran into this man. Perhaps she went into her neighborhood and said, oh, you found a man better than me because I believe some of those men that she told about come see a man and said, oh, we was just together the other night and you told me I was everything. Watch a woman that tells a man that, she's every, that he's everything. But she said, come see this guy. He told me everything and they came and the Bible says that we came because of what you said and we found out indeed he is the savior of the entire world. When you run into Jesus, your life will never be the same. Your language changes. Your attitude changes. Your appetite changes. Your lifestyle changes. What you used to do, this is not a phase. This is a brand new me forever. This is sometimes Friendships change and relationships change. When you meet Jesus, the, the narrative 
of your life, the story of your life, the game changes because Jesus is the game changer. He is the greatest of all time. You, if you want to be better, run into Jesus. Call on Jesus. When you call him, he will answer prayer. And those that do call him, the Bible says in Romans 10 and 14, only those that believe that he's able to fix their life are the ones who call on him. So as I said before, whoever, whenever, however you call, he will rescue you. The people of Israel, listen, God publicly endorsed Jesus of Nazareth by doing powerful miracles, wonders, and signs through him. And let's go on. But as you well, as you well know, but then verse 23 says, but God knew what would happen. Watch this here. And his prearranged plan. This is not an accident. Your, what you deal with is not an accident. This is Pre-planned. We already knew about this. God said, I knew about this. It may be a surprise to you, but this is a pre-arranged plan. It was carried out when Jesus was betrayed with the helpless, help, excuse me, with the help of lawless Gentiles. And yeah, let me just throw, they were help, they were hopeless and therefore helpless. And so therefore they could not help themselves. Therefore they betrayed Jesus. They set him up. It says, you nailed him to a cross and you killed him. But look at verse 24. But God released him from the horrors of death and raised him back to life again. For death could not keep him in its grip. You see that? King David said this about him. And he says, he says, he's always before me. I won't be moved. I'm cognizant of the presence of God. And then we want to jump down, what do we say, verses 36 through 41. So let everyone in Israel know for certain that God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, to be both Lord and Messiah. Peter's words pierced their hearts, Sister Paris. And they said, they said to him and to the other apostles, brothers, what should we do? The pastor didn't say it, come. They said, what must I do about this situation? Peter replied, each of you must repent of your sins and turn to God and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. Then you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. This promise is to you, to your children, and to those far away all who have been called by the Lord our God. That's the backstory. Everything that happens is consequential, Brother Sam. It's because God has something to do with it. If it had not been for God, you wouldn't be here today. I wouldn't be here today. We wouldn't be here today. It's a consequential move from God because God made a decision, because God made a move. The ripple effect is that we are here today. And he says, this promise is throughout generations for all of you. And then Peter continued preaching for a long time, strongly urging all his listeners, save yourselves from this crooked generation. Watch this here. Those who believe what Peter said were baptized and added to the church that day about 3,000 souls. To the utmost, Jesus saves. Our desire today is to wrap this text up and so we can move on. To the utmost, Jesus saves. The text said, whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be, will be saved, will be delivered. Man's need is not a new woman. A uh, woman's need is not a new uh, Bugatti or, 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 or Gucci purse. You, you don't need those things. You want those things. I don't need to have a lot of money. I like a lot of money. But what I need is deliverance. Deliverance from the past. I need salvation. What good does it do to have 
all of these temporary things. The Bible says, what does it profit a man to gain all of these things and lose his soul. Watch this here. We have to make a decision and we are making a decision either for Christ or against Christ. There is no middle ground. You either are for him or you are against him. You, 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 you either are on the team or you're not on the team. So you are either in agreement or you are his opponent. I would hate to be an opponent of Jesus. I would hate to be at war with God. The Bible says it is a dangerous thing to be at war, to be in the hands of an angry God. He sent Jesus to die for me and to die for you. Uh, listen, it's, I've got to tell you the truth because time is winding up. Listen, now is our salvation near than we believe. The Bible says, let us wake up to righteousness. Jesus is coming back. Je the Bible says in the first part of Acts, why stand here gazing? Uh, listen, he said the same way that Jesus left, he's returning again. So Jesus is coming again. So we see Peter, he, he talks, we talk about the reputation of Jesus. And, and I was told that the rep of a person is what they're known for, their consistent character. The Bible says that Jesus was famous. He went throughout the land healing folks and delivering folks and setting people free and, and raising the dead and healing of leprosy. He was touching people with problems, but yet when they touched him, their problems could not taint him. Right. Let me just stop right here to tell you, I don't care how bad it looks, God can't be brought down by you, but God will pick you up with him. Oh, I'm talking good on today. I don't care. I got relatives that are deeply rooted in sin, on drugs. They're deep and nobody can rescue them. But wait a minute, let me call Jesus. The Bible says that I was sinking. According to the psalmist, I was in a deep pit in the miry clay. I was in quicksand. The more I moved, Sister Paris, the deeper I got. But the Bible says he reaches way down into the pit, pick me up, stabilize my feet, put a new song in my mouth, and calls me to praise God. Watch me as the songwriter says, thank you. The hymnist says, I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained within, seeking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despair and cry, and from the waters he lifted me. Now safe am I. It was his love that lifted me. Love, love. Greater love hath no man than this, than one would lay down his life for his brethren. The love of God changes me. We are motivated. The Bible says faith working by love. It was his love that drew me out, Brother Sam. It was his love, Brother Jewel, that redirected my life. I was jacked up. I was messed up. I was towed up. I was a reject. I was dejected. I was discouraged. I was depressed. But the love of God, something happened and all the joy that floods my soul. Listen, I was, I was lost, Paris. And if it had not been for God, you wouldn't be here. I would be in prison dealing with a federal case. But the love of God brought me here, kept me here, keeping me here. You, I wouldn't be your father, brother Sam. I wouldn't be your, 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 your husband. But God, but God, but God, he reached down and he pulled me out. And watch this here. He keeps on doing great things for my life. Oh, glory to the Lamb. It is the utmost saving love of God to the utmost Jesus saved. He saves me. He keeps on rescuing us. All you got to do is call on him in the day of desperation and he will bring you out. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. I love this passage because it doesn't matter what you say. It doesn't matter what other people say. He'll never change. She'll never change. It's just a faith that devil is a lie. Because when God gets on board, he makes a new person out of us. He puts
puts himself into us and he says, let's go. Let's do this. Let's make it happen. I will use your life as a testimony and you can tell all your friends, he did it again. You did the, the, the songwriter says, fight this battle for me. Prove that that was wrong so I can tell all my friends that Jesus did it again. Yeah, he, YDI, you did it again. Yesterday, my sister was up, but you made it away. You did it again. My mama was sick, but you brought her out. You did it again. Uh, we, we thought it was all over, but you did it again. He is the savior of the world. The world, the world, the world, the world, the world. I don't care where you are at. He'll pick you up. He'll turn you around. He'll place your foot on solid ground. Yeah, 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 yeah. So the text, so the text, so the text says, whoever calls on him will be saved. We said he's Jesus Christ, the Lord. Jesus is his saving name. Christ is his strong name. And Lord is his sovereign name. Shall we go on? We said last week that Jesus is the source. We, we said that not only is he the source, but he was sent for us. Uh, we said he seeks us out. The song says the reckless or the relentless love of God. And there's no mountain you won't climb up. There's no wall you won't kick through coming after me. Coming after me. Jesus wrecked his body to save us. How did he wreck it? He was beat all night long. They plunged a crown of thorns in his head. They spit on him. They talked about him. But the Bible says he never said a mumbling word. He never complained. But he put his case into God's hands. He said, I came here for a purpose. I'm going to fulfill that purpose. So when I can look around, it is finished. It's done. It's a done dollar. It's a listen. Th there's nothing in your life that's a deal breaker for God. I gotta say that. So he 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 was sent for me. He seeks me out, and then he saved me. And then he solves it and soothes it for me. Then the text goes on that he was Jesus' reputation was identified by miracles, Sister Mo. Wonders and signs. Miracles is the power of God, Sister Paris. What is it that God can, cannot do? The Bible says, now to him who is able, brother said, to do exceedingly. Able to do abundantly above all that you ask or think. Don't tell God what he's able. Don't limit God. Ask and let God say no. What if God says yes? So he did miracles through Jesus. That's the power of God. And he worked wonders through Jesus. That's the effect upon the individual. The Bible says that he's excellent in greatness. Praise him. Let us bow before our creator. It is his excellent greatness. He's skillful. He's beautiful beyond imagination. And watch this here. He can heal you. He can pour into you without draining himself. He is the unlimited God. He is the all-powerful God. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. Can I go on? Now listen, the Bible says that signs is the message attached to it. There's a message when God moves. There's a message behind it. Now, 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 now one of my 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 my, my, my uh, uh, good writers, Boyce points out the fact that when he when Peter represents Jesus' reputation, he speaks, he reports on Jesus' reputation. He does. There's one thing he leaves out. That is very important. He, he says, Peter says he, he, Jesus was endorsed by God through miracles, through wonders, through signs. But was that the only thing that Jesus did? Jesus taught. The Bible says, have you heard him teach? His, his teaching is wonderful. Have you heard him speak? But Peter doesn't talk about that. Listen, Boyce points out that Peter preaches about Jesus beginning at verse 22. And then watch, watch this. Well, listen, what is missing in this words that we might have expected Peter uh, to talk about? Peter, listen, as one who accompanied Jesus for three years of active ministry. Listen, Peter speaks nothing about the teachings of Christ. We, 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 we would think that Peter would talk about that. Peter speaks nothing about the teachings of Christ. Watch this here. The teachings of Jesus Christ are certainly important. I'm going to go somewhere right here. That is why we have the Gospels. And if you let God work in your life, you will have a good news story 
about him. The teachings of Jesus are recorded for our benefit, the believer's benefit. But Peter's message is a missionary message. He, he's trying to get people saved. He's trying to win people to Jesus. He does not discuss doctrine. He does not discuss the wonderful sayings of Jesus. But here Peter is preaching to men and women who were not believers in Jesus Christ. To men and women who apart from the work of the Holy Spirit were dead in their sins. You can't help a dead man, but what, he, what we need is someone to bring a dead man to life and then we give them the gospel. Listen, and he knew that one could preach successfully to spiritually dead people by saying, do what Jesus tells you. Listen, you can't preach to a person that's dead and tell them do what they can't do it because they have no life in them. Some of these people likely had crucified Jesus because they did not like what he was teaching. So Peter does not tell them what Jesus said, but instead declares what Jesus did for them. What Jesus did for them. He preaches the cross and the resurrection. He says if you're in trouble, he can get you out. If you need something, he can heal you. He does not try to teach a person who does not know about Christ the, the, the truth of Christ. He, he wins them over. He win, It's a relationship before responsibility. And I think if we would teach and preach the gospel, the good news, and that Jesus saves anybody, that Jesus wants to save everybody, that Jesus wants to fix your life, that more people will come, but we crucify people and we say that you've got to do this and they say, I can't do that. But if we get them to Jesus and Jesus gives them a new heart, a new mind, a new spirit, then they are able to do those things. And listen, so listen, so but, 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 but watch this here. Instead, we need to preach first that God sent Jesus to die and to take their place. And all you have to do is receive it as a grace move from God. Now, listen, watch, let me make a clear statement. Uh, when, 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 when we focus on what Jesus is, his capability, and not this doctrine to the unbeliever, what we are showing is the compassionate heart that Jesus had for lost souls. Jesus puts himself in a place to be used. This is a good point here. Watch this here. Jesus puts himself in a place to be used, taken advantage of, to be called on, to be a benefit, to be utilized, to be a help to others. Listen, this week as I began preparing for this sermon, uh, my line of thinking was often more times than not Jesus was taken advantage of. Watch this here. We as his followers take advantage of his magnificent mercy and his abundant grace daily. That was my line of thinking. That was the way I was going with this thing. And then I, had, I then I had a conversation as well with someone who told me that it wasn't right for people to call on God. Watch this. They said it's not right to call on God after they had spent their whole lives living it up and washed up from doing things their own way. And now that their backs are against the wall, they want to call on God. Watch this, but through conversation with others. And listen, and careful consideration of the scripture. You cannot take advantage of a God who makes himself willingly available. You cannot take advantage of one who says, I'm excessively open to be inquired of and undeniably able to deal with any or all of your issues. Listen, that I choose to turn over to him. Listen to what he says in Psalms 50 and 15. He says, call upon me in the day of trouble and I will deliver you. Uh, then he says, and you will glorify me. Proverbs 17, 17 says, and a friend loves at all times. Not with a love only, but not, and not with him down only. Not with him just level with the ground, but he loves. And he says he was born. For adversity. And they who won and said the Lord is good. He's a stronghold, Paris, in the day of trouble. Adversity. Trouble. Trauma. Listen, Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28, he says, come to me. All you who are laboring and under pressure, in pain, struggling, don't know what to do next. And I will give you rest. I like this in Mark 10, 46 through 52, blind Barnabas appears. This man is blind, and he hears that Jesus
Jesus is passing by. I believe Jesus purposely went through that way because he knew that this man was in a situation that none of y'all could heal him of. And, and that, that's the problem. We're practicing on folks. Don't tell people what you can do, but point them to the one that can do anything. So this man says, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And what does Jesus say? Jesus, the almighty God, stopped in his tracks. He says, tell him to come to me. I like that. He says, tell that blind man, come to me. Tell that lying man, come to me. Tell that drug dealer to come to me. Tell that despicable, idiotic man to come to me. And he says, I have one request I want to see. And he says, I will do it as you request it because you believe. I don't care what you're dealing with. God is a game changer. Yes, he is. He'll fix your life. Watch this here. Can I go on and work this? Grace received. Grace received and enjoyed is living and experiencing life with God advantages. I'm going to say it again. Grace received and enjoyed is living and experiencing life with the advantages of God, the rights of God, the privileges of God. Listen, consider this, my friend. When God moves in your life, when God gives you something, it is his privilege. When God saves, that's his privilege. When God opens up doors, that's his advantage. Watch this here. Listen to this. All power is his. When he releases or gives some of his power or works on your behalf, that's a God advantage that you get to benefit from. Uh, Psalm 62, 11 through 12 says, once have I heard this and twice have I heard this, that the power belongs to God. This world is his. According to Psalm 24, 1 through 2, the Bible says, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and they who dwell therein. So the power that he uses is his. It's his. This world is his. Our very breath is his. Genesis 2 and 7 says he breathed into man his breath and they became a living soul. Salvation is his. The Bible says in Psalms 3 and 8, Sister Barris, that salvation belongs to God. Birthing of salvation belongs of God. It was in the mind of God. Salvation belongs to God. Peace belongs to God. According to 2 Thessalonians 3.16, may the God of peace give you his peace. Watch this here. So when we benefit from the grace of God, which is the saving power of God, you are benefiting from the advantages that only belong to God. You got blessed with the job. That's God's advantage. God moved on the boss and allowed you to benefit. Oh, glory to the God who runs the world, the king's heart is in God's hands. So grace received is, and enjoy is living and experiencing life with God's advantages. When God deserves the glory to the utmost Jesus saves. Salvation is God's. Power is God's. My breath is God's. My peace is God's. Watch me here. Not only that, but grace and mercy is his. That belongs to him too, Paris. When he gives me grace every morning, that's God's advantages. That's God's privileges. The Bible says in Lamentations 3, 22 through 24, the faithful love of the Lord never ends. His mercies never cease. Great is his faithfulness. His mercies begin new every morning. I will say to myself, the Lord, the Lord's advantages belong to me. His grace is his mercy. It's his power. It's his peace. It's his breath that we're breathing. Listen, the songwriter says, as long as I've got breath, I will keep on praising the name of the Lord. But verse 23 says, God knew what would happen and his prearranged plan. I'm going to work this today. Was carried out when Jesus was betrayed. Can I tell you something? The death of Christ was not an accident. 
Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Luke 9, 21 through 22. The Son of Man, verse 22 says, the Son of Man must suffer many terrible things. And listen, he will be rejected by the leaders in the church. He, listen, it, it, the priests and the religious uh, uh, leaders, he will be killed. But on the third day, he will be raised from the dead. Not only that, not only was the death of Christ, it was not an accident, but watch this here. Nor was Jesus apprehensive about giving his life to save many. It wasn't an accident. He knew the he knew the assignment. It wasn't an accident, and he was not apprehensive. Jesus wasn't forced to die. Jesus wanted to die. He said, I delight to do your will. I look forward. I want you to be glorified. I want you to be magnified. Watch me work here. This prearranged plan, what you're dealing with in your life, when people gossip and put you down, when people laugh at you, when people talk about you, that's okay. You've got to realize God allowed it. He let it happen. And you've got to put your life in the hands of the man that steals the water. God knows what he's doing. And when he gets done with what he allowed you to go through, you'll be better for it. Thank God for trouble. Thank God for your enemies. Because you got to stay focused. You, you got to stay purposeful. Jesus knew what the assignment was. He came to do the will of God. And had Jesus got unfocused and not finished, we would be lost. We would be destroyed. But thank God for the loyalty of the Lamb. Thank God for the devoted Son of God. Thank God for deliverance. Thank God for freedom. Thank God for peace. Thank God for grace. Thank God for mercy. Thank God for his joy. Thank God for his unspeakable gift. It is the grace of God that we are benefiting from. You are benefiting from the advantages of God himself. You ought to glorify him. You think you got your that job because you're great. If you are great, he made you great. If you are smart, he gave it to you. Glory to God in the churches. Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly. He deserves it. Because of him, all back to him. Glory to God. Glory to God in excelsis day. Oh, glory. He is the almighty God. He is saving to the utmost. Glory to him. Magnify him. Honor him. The devil of Christ was not an accident. Nor was Jesus apprehensive about giving his life to save many. What this Philippians 2 and 8? But he humbled himself. He humbled himself in obedience to God and died a criminal's death. Was Jesus a criminal? No, but you are. Was Jesus a liar? No, but you are. Was Jesus a drug dealer? No, but some of us have been. Was Jesus a homosexual? No, some are. Was Jesus a lesbian? No, he was not, but some are. But Jesus took your place. The Bible says that he who was rich became poor that we might become the righteous. He, he traded places. I, the song, I'm trading my sorrows for, for the joy of the Lord. He traded places so that he could save us. Watch me work here. The Bible says in Hebrews 12, 1 and 2, it says we have a, we've been surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us consider Jesus. Watch this. Who is the author and the finisher of, uh, finisher of our faith? Who for the joy that was set before him, the joy he endured the cross, despising the shame. As I looked at that, what do you mean despising the shame? Was Jesus saying, oh, this is bad. This is horrible. I can't believe they spit on me. Was, I can't believe the Father, they slapped me. Was Jesus said, no, Jesus was not saying that. Despising the shame, watch this here, means to consider not important enough to be an object of concern. But listen, when evaluated against something else. In other words, what Jesus was saying, he said, though these uh, momentary struggles compared to what's going to happen, it can it, it appear. He said, our light afflictions are but for a moment, but, 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 but there's joy ahead. So Jesus considered what he was dealing with. And compared to what was going to happen, he said, this doesn't compare. He despised it. In, in other words, it's a man that's working in the backyard, 
pulling weeds and the neighbors are looking over and saying, look at this guy in the heat and in the sun. But, 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 the, but, but the man realized, I can't listen to that. I've got to stay focused because I'm putting cement down there. I'm putting a covering over there. I'm making an island back there. I've got to stay focused because when I get done, I'll rest. And Jesus died. He came. He was buried. And he died. But the... Bible says that the father got him back up because the grip of hell could not keep him down. The grave could not keep him down. Listen to what I'm saying. What people do to you, they can't keep you down. Because Jesus will pick you up. Let them talk. Let them lie. God will turn a lie and let it better you. He'll make a person lie on you and say, let me come check him out. And, and, and God is a converter. He takes the difficult things and uses them to bring glory out of your life. And the glory out of your life produces glory for him. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So Jesus despised the shame. Paul says our lot of afflictions aren't worthy. Compared to the glory. I'm going to borrow time. I've got to finish this. So Jesus was raised to an exalted place of honor at God's right hand. He always said, Father, give me back the glory which I had before this. Imagine going through without a purpose. Imagine struggling for no reason. Whatever I deal with, there's a reason. When people turn away and leave me, there's a purpose. When people lie on me, there's a purpose. When people abandon me, there's a purpose. And when it all, when the dust settles, I'll be better for it. Don't run away from the struggle. Don't run away from the pain. The Bible says that Jesus steadfastly, he faced Jerusalem. He went to Jerusalem and he willingly gave up his life because he knew there would be glory after this to the utmost he saves and then you know what's amazing about this story in our churches today we force people to repent we scare them we scare the hell out of them to get them into heaven we scare them straight but in our passage Peter preached the real truth about Jesus. And they said, what must we do to be saved? What can we do? And you know what Peter said? Repent and be baptized. I got to work here. Not repent, be baptized to be saved. But he says, repent, now you're saved. And because you are saved, get baptized. Baptism is a symbolism of what God, what God, what God has done. Listen, you can go down in water, an evil, wicked person, and come down, come out of the water, evil. But when God changes you on the inside, a ring is what is, listen, a ring only symbolizes a fact of what has been done. But there's a lot of people wearing rings. They ain't married. <laughs> and without a ring on, they ain't faithful. But when God does something on the inside, so baptism wasn't for salvation, but watch me here. Baptism was because of salvation. I'm going to say it in. Baptism wasn't for salvation. What baptism was for was because of salvation. Without salvation, baptizing doesn't do you no good. To the utmost, Jesus said, they weren't forced to believe, but they were cut to the heart. It's because of what the Holy Spirit did. What did we say a couple weeks ago? He's the Savior. He's the Redeemer. He opens our eyes. And when Jesus opens a man's eyes, he's never the same. To the utmost, Jesus saved. Amen. We, 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 this, this finishes our series, our three-week series on to the utmost, Jesus saves. Come on, we're going to walk through the book of Acts, the series through Acts. We, and, and any other places, God will reveal it. This is just enough to get you into the text. And then, and then as you dive in, more will be given to you. We love you. We are praying for you. 
We, I want to invite you to this God that saves you from whatever, forever, to the fullest degree. I'm going to say, I don't care what you've done, who you've done it with. He saves. He saves. I, I can't express it enough. And stop telling folks they got to do this, that, and that. Jesus is the Savior. He's the deliverer, and he, it don't matter how long you wasted time, call on him, and he will set you free. He will do it. He is able, and then we want to invite you to be a part of this body where you will be needed and utilized, and watch this here. Don't go, don't, don't, don't get, don't go move too quick. You need us. You need us. Uh, we want to invite you. And then we also want to invite you to uh, invest not only your time and membership, but invest your talent, uh, your ministry, and we are asking that you would invest your treasure. It takes money to do ministry. Let's be honest about it. It takes money to do ministry, and every giving that you give is tax deductible. We are a 501c3 ministry. It is tax deductible. Amen. We want to give you uh, a few different options. You can do so via our Cash App platform, Cash App platform to the dollar sign, Church Beyond Walls. You can give so via Venmo at Church Beyond Walls. You can do so via PayPal to area code 951-522-2100. And you can give via Givelify. That's G-I-V-E-L-I-F-Y. Like glorify, but Givelify. Amen. And you can, um, uh, Church Beyond Walls. You can locate, locate us Church Beyond Walls. You'll see our, our logo there. See a few different things. And uh, you'll see our address there. We love you, we are praying for you, and we will see you again. Come take this journey with us as we go through this series through the book of Acts. What God did through regular men and women like you and I. It's God's work. We are his people, and glory will be added unto him in Jesus' name. We will see you again the same time next week.